Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Ashley Van Dyke with Advantage Software. And on today's video, using ASIO audio devices, I'm going to show you how you can make use of advanced audio devices like multi-track devices so that you can record multiple channels of audio and make use of that whenever necessary. For this example, I'm going to be using a device made by a company called Zoom. It's the device that is being held in this hand here. You see my mouse kind of circling around it, and it's the Zoom AMS44. If I scroll down on their page, you see that here it's the four channel version. So this is a multi-track device, which means that it can communicate the signal from each of these four microphone inputs back to your computer. And that means that Eclipse can record each of these four channels individually as if they were on unique devices. Multitracks are different than mixers. A mixing device will just mix all of these channels. And when you plug that device into your computer, you'll be able to record that single mixed channel. Those devices still allow you to use multiple microphones, but they don't pass through the correct information to Windows that would allow Eclipse to record each channel. A multi-track device, however, does exactly that. In this example, the Zoom AMS44 has four input channels and it has four output channels. Other devices that are just mixers would have four input channels, but only one output channel. And so in this case, the multi-track that I'm using has four inputs, four outputs, and that means I can record each of these microphones individually. A mixer might meet your needs instead of a multi-track depending on the scenario. However, in this case, we're going to be discussing using a multi-track so that you can record each channel. If you're a steno or voice reporter and you just want to make sure that you're getting the best audio possible, a small mixer like this plus some boundary microphones that record audio in all directions should get you high quality audio that covers the entirety of your proceedings. I'm going to flip over to Sound Professional's website, and on this page we see the same Zoom AMS44, and it has four microphones attached to it. All of these four microphones are boundary microphones, meaning that they'll record audio from every direction. And typically these high quality boundary microphones have a really high range. If you cover a room with four of these microphones, you'll be able to hear everything within the room. And if you use something like the Zoom AMS44, you'll be able to record everything that each microphone hears and refer to it later. And so if I take a closer look at this device, you see that it has four microphones hooked up and each of these channels has a gain input adjustment. And so this is how you can make each of your microphones louder or quieter when you're recording an eclipse. If you want the highest quality audio, then something like this will easily meet your needs. And I'm going to show you how you can set it up right now. So I'm going to go into Eclipse. And one of the things that's important to note when you're working with advanced audio devices, you may need to close Eclipse and then reopen Eclipse to make sure that it sees your devices. Generally speaking, you want to make sure that all of your audio devices are plugged in before you open Eclipse. But if you don't see something, just close Eclipse and reopen it. To set up multi-channel recording using an ASIO device, I'm going to go to my real-time tab and I'm going to choose audio recording. In the audio recording window, first I wanna make sure that I only have one channel of audio listed. Once I've made sure that only one channel is listed, I'm going to click compression and make sure that the compression that I want to use is selected. If I'm using boost or boost flow, then I wanna make sure that I choose PCM at 1616. Next, I'm going to select the correct audio device. And so we are using the ASIO drivers. And so we're going to look for one of the devices that has an A colon in front of it, indicating that it's using the advanced ASIO drivers. However, as we look through this list, we see that the Zoom AMS44 is listed several times. First is Zoom AMS44 ASIO driver. Next is Zoom AMS44 audio with a line in connection. Last, there's a line in connection for the Zoom AMS44 loopback. So there are three total devices that I could potentially record with. How do I know which one is the correct one? First of all, I know that I'm not going to want to record with loopback since these are real microphones that I'm recording. I want to choose the actual device instead 
you only want to use loopback when you're trying to record audio that your computer is playing back. There might be times where you'd use the loopback on a multitrack for certain audio setups, but for general multitrack recording, that's not what you want. And once we eliminate the loopback option, we're left with the line in option and then the ASIO driver option. In this case, it might be obvious that the ASIO driver is the one that I'm going to select, and that is in fact the case. The Zoom AMS44 ASIO driver is the multi track driver for this device. The line in driver is the mixing driver for this device. If I were to choose just the line device or this line device up here, I would still get audio from my device, but I would only be able to access one channel and it would have all of the microphones attached to this device mixed together. And so in this case, I want to record each channel individually. So I'm going to select the Zoom AMS44 ASIO driver, and this is a four channel device. So I can add up to four channels. And so here we see that I have channel zero, which is going to be my mix channel. Eclipse is automatically going to mix the inputs from each of the other four channels on all of my four microphones into one file for my convenience. If you use assistive features like Boost or Boost Flow, or you do something like team editing, then this is the channel that would be used for those purposes, and it will have all of the other channels input included. Note that as I added devices, each input automatically incremented. And so I started with input one on channel one, input two on channel two, and so on. Eclipse does this for you automatically when you're using advanced drivers. And you'll also note that the compression I set before has been applied to each of the four channels, as well as the mix channel. And so now that my audio recording is set up, I can show you how you can tell that it's working correctly. To test your audio recording, you do not actually need to start a real-time file. I'm going to press Alt-E, and I'll type in a name for my file. Once I'm in this blank file, I can go to Tools, Multimedia, and just hit Record to test my current recording settings. And if I look in the lower left-hand corner of my screen, I see that I have a waveform display for each of the four channels that I added in my real-time settings. As I speak, every channel that hears me will have a bouncing indicator and you'll see that there's a red voice icon. If the channel is turned up too loud, I'll get a clipping icon. However, if a channel is turned down too low, then I won't get any bounce on that channel at all. And so since multi-track devices have the input gain volume controls, you're able to adjust how loud each of your microphones is going to be recording. And you'll note that everything that each channel hears is also being mirrored within the mix channel. As I adjust channel number one to be louder, it becomes the dominant channel. And you see my voice bouncing strongly and steadily as I speak. If I turn channel one back down, now I've turned channel one all the way down to zero. It can't hear me at all. And so using your volume controls on your multi-track device, you're able to fine tune your channels so that whenever speakers who are adjacent to each of your microphones speak, you get even bouncing on all of your associated microphone channels. In this case, I've elected to not plug a microphone into channel four at all. And you see that everything still works. It's no problem at all for Eclipse that that channel simply isn't being used. If microphones are properly adjusted, then you'll see greater waveform bouncing when speakers speak into the microphones that they are closest to. If I switch and speak into channel number two, you see that that's the channel that now bounces. And if I switch again and speak directly into channel number one, that's the channel where bouncing occurs. And so if you're using a multi-track device, it's important that you have your microphones placed appropriately. If you're using something like the AMS Zoom 44 kit, where you have the device plugged into your computer as we see here, and then you have four microphones distributed around the room, you could have one microphone adjacent to the defense table, one at the plaintiff table, one with the judge, and another wherever necessary. This will make sure that you have up close and personal recordings of all of your participants. And since each of these channels in Eclipse is recorded and is independently recorded, 
you'll be able to go back and review each of these recordings for accuracy. That way, if people are speaking into all of your microphones at once, you might have trouble distinguishing who's saying what on the mix channel. However, in your user settings, under Edit Audio Playback, there's a channel option. If you choose Main, it's going to play back the mix channel, which will mix all of your different audio signals together for you. However, if you need to, you can choose 1, 2, 3, all the way up to channel 15 to play that specific channel that you've associated in your recordings. That way you can hear only what someone said at the plaintiff table or the defense table or in the sidebar area. If you're going to use a multi-track device, it's important that you practice with it. As you can see here, even a mild adjustment with the volume can make it so that channel one no longer really hears me even though all of these microphones are adjacent to one another right now. If one of your channels is accidentally turned too far down or too far up, then you might encounter problems understanding the audio that's been recorded. And so it's important when you have a multi-track device that you practice with it and learn how to manage the channels so that you can make sure you're getting a nice healthy bounce with each of your speakers but avoid problems like clipping. If your audio is consistently and significantly showing you that clipping icon while you're recording, the chances are very good that the audio during those portions of the recording are not going to be fun to listen to. And you can save yourself a lot of trouble by reducing your volume input gains on your multi-track device to eliminate that clipping indicator as much as possible. It's something that might still appear occasionally and that's okay. However, you see that as I speak, there's only a few places where the waveform display now is turning red. And you can make sure that you adjust those as necessary to reduce the amount of clipping that you get so that you get a nice clean audio recording. Multi-track devices allow you to get very high quality audio and they allow you to do it fairly easily. Some devices are incredibly complicated and have options to adjust almost any setting you can think of when it comes to recording. However, other devices such as the AMS44 are fairly simple. There's only a few options to make sure that the device will work correctly for you. And once you have it set up in your Eclipse and in Windows, all you need to do is adjust the input volumes for each of your channels to make sure that you're getting a good recording. You can use the waveform display within Eclipse to stay in tune with the proceedings and make sure that your recording is performing the way that you need it to do. You can listen to your recording at any time during real time to make sure that the results you're getting are correct. And since you're using a multi-track device, you can make changes on the fly anytime it's necessary. Although the example I showed you on Sound Professional's website uses boundary microphones, you also have the option of using unidirectional microphones. If most of your work consists of depositions, with only two to four speakers. You could assign a microphone to each of those speakers and record an individual channel for each of them, giving you crystal clear audio that you can refer to should it ever be necessary. The correct type of microphone to use certainly varies depending on the type of work you do and the environment that you're going to be doing it in. However, if clear audio is important to you and you're making use of features like Boost or Boost Flow, or if you share your audio with others for the purposes of scoping, making the investment in high quality audio will pay you dividends in the long run. Using a multi-track allows you to record individual channels that can be referred to later. If your witness testimony is buried by crosstalk, you can simply listen to the channel associated with the witness so you can hear what they said without the intrusion of the other speakers. Multi-track devices typically also offer an option to plug headphones into them and monitor the audio that's being recorded live in real time. And so you can also use them as real-time amplification systems. If you're having trouble hearing your witnesses or participants, an audio system can help you bridge that gap, particularly when it comes to large rooms. Although multi-track devices seem complicated at first, with a bit of practice and a little help from tech support, we have no doubt that you'll master it in no time. And your reward will be the crystal clear audio recordings that come with high quality audio gear. 
Don't forget that Advantage Software offers anytime support. Tech support is available with any question, anytime, including weekends and holidays at 772-288-3266. Email support is also available at support at eclipsecat.com. Thank you for watching this video. Please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so that you'll be notified when we publish new content in the future. Thank you so much and have a great day.